Hey, what's going on guys? This is Mike from Obox and we're back with like an electrical electrifying tutorial here on YouTube. And I just wanna give you a heads up. I kinda got this technique from another guy. Um, I'll link his channel down in the description below. He makes great, great tutorials. You definitely wanna go over there and check him out. So it's a very simple technique, but let's go ahead and get started. So I have this logo here that I made in in Illustrator. It's just like an, an X logo. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to uh, create shapes from vector layer and then go ahead and delete that vector. Right click, rename, and I'm gonna rename this electricity. So I'm just gonna scale this up to about that, so that size, select this layer and for some reason, okay, there we go. <laughs> for some reason that th stuff wasn't popping up but it was because I was checked on something else. But anyways, okay. So I have this layer, I don't need a fill. Actually what I'm gonna do first, before I even get started, I'm just gonna click this and click Control D, make a duplicate, right click, rename, and make this logo. Put it down on the bottom and actually make it just invisible. So I have left this electricity layer and I don't need a fill, so I just click the fill button and hit none. And this stroke, I don't need to adjust the stroke here because I'm actually gonna keyframe it. But what I wanna do is I wanna change the color of the stroke to maybe like an electrifying turquoise. So I'm just selecting this layer to the search and I'm gonna search fill. No, I'm not, I'm gonna search stroke. <laughs> stroke width, and if you don't have that search bar, if you're an older version of After Effects, you just go through this. Contents group one, stroke one, stroke fill. I'm actually gonna move this to about 10 frames. And let's see what else, let's add trim paths. So what trim paths does um, is it basically trims the stroke for you. But you notice it starts kind of up in this corner. I want it to start down here. So I'm gonna just set this offset. But if you hold control, um, you can modulate it a lot, a lot better. So I'm just gonna come to about right there. Doesn't have to be perfect. Set a start and end keyframe. And I think we're just about to get ready to get started. I'm just gonna hit you on the keyboard and it shows me now only my keyframe selected. So what I basically wanna do is I want to make this start like this. And I want it to go all the way around and then have it be followed all the way around. My stroke width, what I want it to do is I kinda want it to start thicker so maybe 3.5, and I want it to end at maybe, I don't know, one, maybe 0.2 actually. <laughs> so, all right, since you can't see anything because it's literally being drawn and erased at the exact same rate. So what I wanna do is I wanna adjust the curves here for the start and the stroke width. So I'm gonna select these, I'm gonna use my tool over here again. You can get it at mountmograph.com. It's like 35 bucks. It was literally the best 35 bucks I spent in After Effects. It's the only tool I use. Um, but basically, what you'll see is I'm actually gonna hit Control Z. I'll show you what it does. If I click this here and I click this, uh, this graph editor, you could see that this is the speed graph. And you could look at different, at different graphs. Um, show value graph. So you see how this is just a linear, a linear value. But what happens is, uh, let's see if I can get it all selected. What happens is, is that if I select these keyframes here and I use this tool, you'll see that it changes. You could do it from here. You could modify these, but it's way easier if you have the tool. <laughs> I know, like to mess with that. So now what you end up with is something that kind of looks like that. So you see that that because I didn't modulate these speeds for the end, it kind of trails it, but then it catches back up. So that looks pretty cool as is already, to be honest. Um, but if you want to kind of make it kind of look more electrifying, come into effects and presets, turbulent displace. I know we use this, this turbulent displace all the time, but it's seriously so useful. What you see here is that if you increase the amount, decrease the size, you slowly get something that looks very electrifying. Increase the complexity, and now you have something that looks pretty electrifying. 
If you set some evolution keyframes, basically what this does is it makes it look a little less static. So I'm actually gonna increase this to like uh, maybe one or even two. Hit you on the keyboard again, show all of my keyframes. And so now you wind up with something that kind of looks like that. I think 0.2 is a little too small, so I'm gonna go to 0.5. So that looks pretty cool already. To make it look even cooler, which of course you always wanna do, let's add some glow to it. That way it really looks like electricity. Wow, that already popped. Increase the glow radius a little bit. Maybe mess with the threshold, kind of just, I just want the most glow as possible. The setting almost doesn't matter. I just want a lot of glow. Whoa, that was weird. So we're cooking with fire now. So now we could make this logo visible and now we just ruin the entire thing. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna select this logo, make the width zero, change the fill to white. And now what I wanna do is a little trick that I came up with to make it this kind of look like it's blinking in almost like a, like a blinking fluorescent light bulb. So if I hit T on the keyboard, I get opacity. And if I open this up here, I'm going to contents, group one, transform, I can go to skew. I'm gonna set a skew keyframe, hit U on the keyboard again. And now what I wanna do is go maybe two frames. Well, I actually wanna start with a zero color coloration go up two keyframes, bring the bring it up to maybe 30%. Maybe I wanna add some skew here. Sorry, my dog just opened my door and I had to shut it. So bring the skew back to zero. Maybe start the skew not off so extreme, maybe eight and zero, go up two, bring the coloration, the, the opacity down. We add some skew. Just go maybe only one keyframe. Bring the coloration opacity all the way up to maybe like 60. We bring this to maybe even negative one. Just add some variety, just kind of making it as random as possible. And then we want to go up to maybe a like hundred percent. And then maybe we want to go to maybe 60, maybe even lower. And then 100% again. We'll just see how this looks. So there you go. It already looks way cooler than it did before. So what you could do here is you could actually select these. You, you might wanna mess with them and make it look even better. We're, I'm not gonna be here all day to make this perfect. Um, you'll do your own method. You'll kind of make it look however you want. Um, but if you select these keyframes, you can go to um, animation, save animated preset. And I actually saved one from earlier. It's called blink in. And you'll see here what I could do is if I delete this, I could just come to effects and presets, type in blink in. Not bikini, blink in, drop it on the logo, and you'll see here that these keyframes were dropped right, right where I wanted them. Not right where I wanted them, actually. And so you see there. This one might look even a little bit better. It's hard to really tell, to be honest. They look pretty similar. So now you wind up with something that looks like that. So what I notice in After Effects is that you go from very cool or very simple, but really nice to, you know, it's kind of a beginner intermediate level, right? This is very simple. This is very intermediate level. Most people could do this if they worked with After Effects long enough. But to get, to go from, you know, basic to really, really awesome, it usually only requires just a little bit of a, of a twist, just a tad twist. So that twist, what I realized here is TV. If you type TV, you get TV, different options. TV warp is a good one. Now, what I need to do is I need to go layer new, layer new, adjustment layer. And what this does, if you don't know, it basically puts any anything I do to this adjustment layer, it applies to all of these layers. So this TV warp, you see now it's starting to warp it and it kind of looks a little bit more interesting. It almost looks like you're looking at a TV. 
What I also want to do is I actually want to add a glow. And you know what, now that I think about it, I could have just added the glow to the adjustment layer. I'm actually going to come here, copy this glow, and paste it onto the adjustment layer. And whoa, that is super bright. Let's not do that, actually. <laughs> let's just paste it onto the logo. And let's augment these, eff these effects here. That was way too bright. Um, but you could do it on the adjustment layer if you wanted to. So now what you wind up is something that kind of looks like that. This electricity to me just doesn't quite look bright enough for some reason. Maybe it's the coloration. It's possible the coloration just isn't, isn't quite... where it needs to be. I'm just gonna delete the whole glow and uh, copy it from, from this one. Looks a little bit better. So now what we need to do is just select all these layers, Control Shift C, name this um, base. Come here, layer new solid. Nice dark, dark gray. Place it underneath. So you wind up with something like that. I'd even, I'd even argue to make this even, even darker. Kind of, I honestly really wish that uh, that that electricity had some more glow to it. I just don't really realize why it's not getting a good glow. That looks a little bit better. I just duplicated the glowing, augmented it a little bit. So now you wind up that with something that looks pretty awesome. Now the reason why I created a new shape layer, or not a create a new shape layer, composed them all together is because if I added a background to this base, You see that the whole thing looks like a TV, which might be something you're interested in, but you see here that it's kind of warped on the side. And the reason is because it's, it is technically warping the image a little bit. Um, but hey, that might be something you're interested in, in seeing, but it does take a long time to render. <laughs> so let's see what this looks like. I mean, that, that looks pretty cool, if that's what you're into. I just really like the solid background look, personally. I think that looks cool. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe. There are tons of videos on this channel that will help you learn After Effects better. Um, let me know in the comments down below if there's any tutorials or anything that you wanna see. Um, be made that you don't know how they've been made over the across the internet and I'll hopefully be able to try to figure it out. Anyways guys Thanks for watching <laughs>